Alright people, what you see here is my future enclosed garden area. Alright y'all, just sitting in my enclosed garden area. Just trying to get ready for spring planting. This is also going to keep the squirrels out and the birds. And maybe then I'll have something to eat. Alright, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I put all this together. They're seven foot by four foot panels with chicken wire. And I built it like this because I can move it around. I can configure it the way I want to. And that just works better for me. Hey y'all. Welcome back to my channel from her workshop. If you're new here, thank you for joining us. And of course, my regular family, thank you for coming back. Alright, so now that the weather is getting kind of nice, I plan to go outside and do some stuff because with my gardening, I need a safe way to protect my vegetables and my fruit trees because the squirrels are getting just outrageous. going to make some panels to cover our garden and protect it from the little furry animals out there. All right, and in front of me, I have a few things that you're going to need if you want to do this. So most of the panels are going to be four feet by seven feet, and then I'm going to cover it with some chicken wire. So these are the materials that I'm going to need to do that. All right, y'all, I'm just going to run through these things that we're going to need for the panels first. Of course, you're going to need screws. I'm going to be using deck screws, 10 by three and a half inches and 10 by two and a half inches. A drill, driver. Of course, I'm going to need some knee pads, eye protection, gloves, some kind of marking utensil. And I will be using the chop saw, but if you don't have a chop saw or if you're outside you can use a little portable um, saw like this and of course we may need some pliers in case those uh, staples are not where they need to be and I need to remove them and a hammer and the, these two go along with putting the chicken wire or the screen in which I have a manual stapler here and of course staples then I have an electric stapler because that right there will wear you out. So when you put the staples in, sometimes they don't fire like they need to and they may break off and you have to pull them out or bang them in. All right, and over here, when you put your chicken wire on, uh, you're gonna have to cut it in some kind of way because it's four feet across and then I'll have to take it down to seven feet which is the height of the panel and so I'll have to cut it off so this is a good tool for that and this right here too but this is a lot of work this is better all right and as I see it we're going to be using some wire for that so I've got chicken wire here four feet by 50 feet but I also have another one four feet by 150 feet and I think we'll start with that because I have quite a few panels to make so We'll wait on this one. And then I think I'm going to use this for the door simply because I have it. And it's a smaller type fencing. Let me see what this is. It says it's hardware cloth. Okay. There we go. And of course, we always need our handy dandy measuring implement. Alright y'all. So over here, I just have some pressure treated 2x4s that I'm going to cut at 4 feet and they will serve as the base and maybe the top. I really don't like using pressure treated wood with my gardening stuff, but the way they treat it these days, is not as harmful. But anyway, these are going to be for ground contact and the top, so it's not really gonna affect the food that I'm growing. I've got it set up so I can just gain cut them because like I said, I got quite a few of them to do. make the sides of my panel and to make them at seven feet what I'm going to do is make these at 81 inches because seven feet is 84 inches and then I'll have one and a half 
inches on each side. So that equals three. So 84 minus three is 81. So this is where we're gonna cut these at. And I'm explaining this now because like I said, I got several of them that I need to do. And I'm gonna make this first one and show y'all exactly how I made it. I realized that that assembly was not smooth nor was it pretty but hey we got it done that's all that matters now we need to put our um, chicken wire on there and I'm, I'll guarantee you it's not gonna be smooth or pretty but we're gonna get it done all right so this is how it comes you see all these stickies out here this is why you need some gloves and it's very hard to manage so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it that way. So when it rolls off, it'll hit one of those workbenches and it'll stop. So that'll give me a little bit of leverage. Oh, Lord. And I guess y'all noticed that I put a center brace in here. And the reason I did that is because you don't really know until you put it together. And I figured that this will give it a little bit more stability because it's, it looks wider than I imagined it. Now, all right, people, because I'm working by myself and some of this stuff is heavy and unmanageable, I'm going to enlist the help of some clamps at various stations once I roll this out. Okay. All right, let me tell you something, people. This is not fun at all, but it's, it has to be done. Um, and like I said, I'm not having any fun, but I am kind of enjoying it because whenever I see something that I've done, it makes me feel proud. Well, anyway, this now needs to be stretched, and I'm going to be stretching it this way so I don't mess up the little one-inch spaces that I have here. All right, so... It's going to involve shifting around my clamps, stapling, pulling. All right, and I will spare y'all the other 12 that I have to do. That's why I'm being so in-depth on this one, because I want y'all to know what you're getting yourself into. So, here we go. All right, y'all, so I'm just doing a little bit of stretching and stapling. And these staples don't always go in like and where you want them to. See that? So that's why I say please wear your safety glasses and some gloves. And keep your fingers away from the stapler. You see how I adjusted it back here for them to go down, but sometimes it just won't do it. I don't know why. We're gonna be here all day.
right y'all after that first one i switched up the way i'm doing things so instead of rolling it over i'm rolling it under see how that is so i'm rolling it that way and that kind of pulls it a little bit for me since i'm still by myself all right and i think this is going to work out a lot better and i do realize it's not going to be exactly flat because i don't want to stretch it too much people we got all our panels done I'm gonna be truthful with you um, after about the fourth one I stopped trying to stretch it and I just put it on there as best I could and I did decide that the handheld stapler worked best I don't know what was going on with that electric one but anyhow the handheld one worked a lot better and especially going into the soft wood but now this wood here that's pressure treated I don't know if it seems harder or what but the staples just didn't want to go and some of them I had to put in screws with some washers just to hold that together but as I said before I'm gonna go through all of them and just reinforce the way that I have it um, held together. I don't know if that's with better staples or if that's gonna be with just some um, tiny little pieces of wood, you know, to make a border around there. Well, anyway, this was my first one, y'all, and I messed up on it. Um, what it is is I didn't leave enough room here at the base, so, cause it kinda came to right there. But of course, you know, it would not be wasted. And then from that 150 foot roll, as you can see, we still have quite a bit left. And that's good because I've got a few more panels to make for some other project. So in total, we have nine of them. I wish I had more, but we'll make it do. All right, so now the next thing I gotta do is get them all outside and put them together. together all of this stuff right here is what I want enclosed from the squirrels and the birds and the whatever kind of animal trying to eat my food so let's get started All right, people, as you can see, I've kind of got a rectangle, octagon, square sort of thing going on there. But that's the beauty of having individual panels. 
you can configure it any way you want to. Now you see that little open space right in there? That is where I would like to have a door or either replace this one with a door. I do have one panel left that I could make into a door, but as you see right here, I have my um, garden bench. So I would like that door to be right off of there. So once I get finished potting anything, I can just go directly in there. And as you can see, I've got pretty good space going on in there. I can reach everything on each side. I don't have to bend over. And that is one of the great things about it. No back pain. All right, stay tuned. And remember, like I said, this is just a small configuration. I'll sit there and ponder on it, and then I'll maybe make some more changes but right now it's pretty sturdy with clamps and screws all right y'all you see that little opening right there watch me squeeze in and out of there more than likely that's going to be a future door all right y'all i'm up on top of the hill now looking down so you can kind of get a better view of what's going on there and remember, I told y'all this is a dry run. So with the panels being individual, such as they are, four feet by seven feet, they can be moved and configured into whatever kind of shape you want them in. And since on this side of the house, I have such a small space, I think that's gonna work out better for me. All right, thank y'all so much for watching. Stay tuned. Because next video, I'll be making a door and we'll be adding a nice top that's going to still allow sun to come through and rain. But it's going to keep the birds from swooping down and the squirrels from crawling up and over. Love y'all. Be blessed.